Good evening and thanks for joining us. Dr. Martin McNeil was a prominent Utah physician with eight children who loved and looked up to him. But after his former beauty queen wife suddenly died in their home, it was their eldest daughters who pressed the authorities for many years to charge their own father. Today, his bizarre case went to the jury, and in just hours, the jury returned a verdict. It's our series, Crime and Punishment. For 57-year-old Martin McNeil, these were not the words he hoped to hear. We, the jury, having reviewed the evidence and testimony in the case, find the defendant as to count one, murder, guilty. <laughs> as to count two, obstruction of justice, guilty. The Utah doctor had been charged with murdering his wife in the bathtub of their suburban home. The star witnesses, McNeil's own daughters, who were single-handedly responsible for convincing prosecutors to bring charges against their father. Ever since the day my mom died, I was concerned that my father killed her. And um, I've been fighting to get justice for this case uh, ever since then. But the defense maintains that Michelle McNeil died of a heart condition, as the medical examiner initially ruled. She certified the cause of death as being due to hypertension, cardiac, or cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and myocarditis. And that the prosecution can't prove that Michelle was murdered at all. There is not evidence in this case that rises to the level of guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Now a jury of five men and three women deciding there was proof beyond a reasonable doubt of his guilt. The story jurors heard from prosecutors over the course of the 14-day trial was almost too strange to believe. It began on an April morning in 2007 in this gated community south of Salt Lake City, Utah. A distraught-sounding Martin McNeil called 911. When police showed up, McNeil said his wife passed out while preparing the tub, and they soon ruled it an accident. But his daughters were suspicious, and they eventually became convinced their father had planned the whole thing, persuading Michelle, a former beauty queen, to get a facelift with only one real goal in mind, to over-medicate her during recovery and ultimately kill her. My mom was hesitant to get the surgery. Um, she was talking to my dad, um, saying that maybe we should delay the surgery. He got really angry at my mom and said, no, you cannot do that. If you don't uh, have the surgery now, you're not getting it. Daughter Alexis kept close tabs on her mom and the drugs she was taking. The Valium at 12 a.m., the Phenergan at 1.30 a.m., uh, and then gave her two Percocets at 1.30 a.m., and then one Ambien at 1.30 a.m. Alexis McNeil is the most important witness for the prosecution because she monitored the drugs her mother was taking and kept a logbook. She was suspicious of her father because she found her mother over-medicated the first day she was home. And Alexis went back to school, the next day her mother was dead. But it was only years later that they were able to convince authorities to take another look at their mother's death. And once they did, they learned a lot more about McNeil and his seemingly bizarre behavior. Starting with the 911 call, where McNeil either hung up on the dispatcher or was disconnected twice and provided the wrong address. Okay, is she conscious? This meant lost precious minutes in the fight to save Michelle's life. And maybe most troubling, he said he couldn't remove his dying wife from the bathtub alone. Okay, did you, did you get her out of the water? I did. I the water out. Next door neighbor Doug Daniels was called over when McNeil claimed he needed a man's help to move the body. I definitely could have got her out of the tub myself. He also testified that McNeil kept stopping CPR. And then he'd throw his hands in the air, uh, I think twice he would say, why? Why would, why would you do this? All because of a stupid surgery. The first responders said McNeil was loud and distracting. He was so disruptive um, to the crew that, as the fire chief, I removed him from the actual patient care scenes. And shortly after that, McNeil allegedly asked his son's girlfriend to dispose of the drugs Michelle had been taking. He asked you to flush the pills down the toilet? Yes. Uh, and did you do that? Yes. Did that request seem strange to you? At the time, I, it did seem strange, yes. Drugs that her plastic surgeon had not even wanted to prescribe. 
Uh, that was because Martin indicated to me that he was very concerned about his wife, that she didn't handle pain well. Ms. Willis, if you'll come forward. But maybe most suspicious of all, it turned out married Martin McNeil had a girlfriend. My name is Gypsy Willis. Gypsy Willis, who McNeil had met online a year and a half before his wife's death, admitted under oath that she and McNeil had been having an affair. Did the relationship become sexual? It did. And when was that? I think that was in January of 2006. And how often were the two of you having sexual relations? We would see each other about a couple of times a month. According to the prosecution, the pair even exchanged calls on the day of Michelle's death and 15 texts on the day of her funeral, a funeral Gypsy attended. You attended the funeral, you said? I did. Did you speak to the defendant at the funeral? I spoke to him briefly a after and just said, I hope you're all right, and if there's anything I can do, please let me know. I'm so sorry for your loss. I was and where she and Martin McNeil pretended to meet for the first time. My father said, um, oh, thank you. Um, what's your name, I'm sorry? Oh, my, she said, oh, my name is Jillian. What got his daughters really suspicious? Shortly after Michelle's death, he moved Gypsy into his home and announced she would now be the family's new nanny. I, I expected her to be focused on the children. Okay. I expected her to do things related to that, to, to cook or clean or take care of the children. And what did you see her doing? My dad was cooking. She was sitting there staring at my dad. McNeil and Gypsy were convicted in 2009 for stealing the identity of, get this, one of the McNeil's own adopted daughters in an effort to wipe out Gypsy's debt. And while behind bars, numerous inmates claimed McNeil made incriminating statements. He said he gave her some oxy and some sleeping pills and then um, got her to get in the bathtub. One even testified that he confessed to the murder. He said, I'm getting away with murdering my wife. But all along, the defense has argued that while McNeil may be an unsavory character, he's no murderer. That we probably shouldn't let emotions cloud our judgment. Does the defense intend to call witnesses? The defense presented its case in a day, with just three witnesses offering what they say is an alibi. What do you make of the defense's alibi claim? The defense tried to show that Martin McNeil was not at the house the morning that his wife died. But he couldn't have done it. That he absolutely couldn't have done it, but there's a big hole there that they couldn't account for. Mr. Besser, would you come forward here? But maybe their most important witness tried to explain why McNeil might not have been able to lift his wife from the tub. So you can't get directly close to the tub uh, to lift out. But the defense's main argument? That the prosecution did not prove that Michelle was murdered. So you're saying there's a chance that this jury is going to say, we think he wanted it to happen. We think that he certainly could have done it, but we're not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that she died at his hands. Yes, that's precisely what I'm saying, that if the jury acquits him, they are probably thinking, he probably did it, but it's just not enough. I don't want to send this man to prison for murder. I'm just not absolutely convinced. But that wasn't the way the jury saw it. Tonight, Dr. Martin McNeil found guilty. What a trial.